Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel, I'm Rob, and today we'll be jumping into some Tales from Tech Support. Our first story today comes to us from BamBam67, Taking Over for Bad IT. Yes, another one. Let's jump right in. Hello boys and girls, Uncle BamBam67 here to tell you another tale of the aftermath of bad IT support. I know most of the stories posted here are about users, but we have to recognize some of the bad apples in IT as well. I've been fortunate or unfortunate to take over for a few bad IT folks. This is around the early 2000s. I had been doing contract IT work for about three months and not liking it. I posted my resume on Craigslist. Yes, I've received many calls and jobs from posting on Craigslist back in the day. And the next day I get a call. A medical manufacturing company, 1.5 hour drive away, needs an IT manager and desktop support all in one. I'm hesitant because of the commute, but agree to meet with a promise of a free lunch. I meet with the CFO and have this conversation. So what do you think? Will you give us a chance? It is a bit of a drive. I'll make it worth your while. As a startup company, I have the power to offer you stock options and a bonus, not to mention our benefits package and a 401k. Let me go home and talk to my wife about this. Now, you may know already, but getting stock options are great to get on top of your salary. This company later sold and I'm still reaping the benefits. So as you can guess, I said yes and I start my daily three hour commute. It wasn't until my first day that I realized something was horribly wrong with the former IT guy. Let me set the scene. HR, who was great at this company, shows me the office and I notice every cubicle is full. She takes me to the server room that had probably the loudest cooling fans I'd ever heard. Just inside the server room is a desk. For right now, this will be your desk. I'm hoping to get some more cubes built for more new hires and yourself. I appreciate that. I'll be hearing the fans in my sleep. And I did. Okay, I'll leave you to it. HR leaves and I settle into my desk. Check out the servers I have and start taking inventory. Then a strange occurrence. I see part of someone's head poke through the door. Hello, can I help you? I am so sorry. I can come back later if you're busy. They cringe in the doorway while apologizing. No, no, I'm BamBam67. How can I help you? Well, my Outlook is having trouble. You can look at it anytime you want. I don't mean to bother you. I kid you not, user looked like a scared little kitten, as if they were waiting for me to lash out. Instead, let's go take a look at it right now. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure that's why they hired me. Let's go. As I helped the user, they told me a strange tale of the former bad IT guy. Bad IT guy was sent by a third party IT agency that helped monitor their IT systems. Bad IT guy came two to three times a week to help with all types of issues. He seemed very competent and he was offered a job of IT manager. He quickly became an IT tyrant. He despised helping users and became combative with the engineering group. I was told stories of shouting matches on the main floor between bad IT guy and senior engineer. Who is the senior engineer? He sits in a cube in front of the rest of his group. He can be a little grumpy. I was done fixing users issue and I made a beeline to senior engineer. I stand calmly outside his cube. Excuse me, sorry to interrupt, but are you senior engineer? Yes, I am. I'm BamBam67, the new IT guy. Oh, his mood went from stale to crusty. Look, I heard you had an issue with the last IT guy. Let me assure you, I'm here to help you. Whatever you need, let me know. All right, thanks. Wait, I need a new mouse. Standard or ergonomic? Ergonomic if possible. My wrist, got it. Let me talk to HR about our purchasing procedure and I'll get right on it. Okay, seemingly surprised. Thanks. HR and I took a shopping trip at lunch. We had a Fry's Electronics in our office complex, Western theme. Before a senior engineer came back from lunch that same day, his new mouse was set up and ready to go. A couple weeks pass and I'm still getting users hesitant to ask for help until this happened. I received an email from senior engineer that he's leaving office for a while and asks if I could update his graphics driver. He leaves and I walk up to his desk. It was like being a stranger in an old western movie. The townsfolk all staring at me as I walk down Main Street, engineering cubicle row, and go about my job. Does senior engineer know you're on his machine? Yes sir, I'm helping him out with an update. Really? Senior engineer asked you? Yep. I continued downloading the update and then finally installing it. It took longer than expected. 
As I'm wrapping up with a reboot, Senior Engineer walks back in and makes a beeline for me in his cube. I'm in his chair as he's peering over the side of his cube. How'd it go? Slower than I thought, but it installed okay. Hopefully that makes a difference with SolidWorks. Thank you so much, BamBam67, loudly so all his fellow engineers couldn't help but hear. I walked away feeling like I broke the IT curse. I was busier than ever working on every computer in the building. No one was ever turned away or yelled at. It was one of the best companies I've worked for from the leadership on down. Eight years later, we were bought by the evil empire J&J, &J, and that, my fellow IT friends, is a whole different story. OP continued this story in a second post. It's called, Things That Change After a Buyout. Let's jump right in. This is a follow-up from Taking Over Bad IT. After working eight great years with a medical manufacturing company, the news came in. We just got bought by big medical company. Oh, happy day. My stock options were worth money now. It will look great on the resume to work for big medical company. The future looks bright, or so I thought. Day one, we all celebrate. Lunch is brought in and we do karaoke. Yes, I sang Billy Joel's Piano Man. Such great fun. Day two, big medical company has individual meetings scheduled. We are to bring our updated resume in order for them to consider reassignment, or so we were told. Instead, it was an end of employment meeting, complete with documents showing us how to apply for unemployment and how to train for a new job. Our celebration quickly turned to sadness as we found out the manufacturing part of our product was heading to a facility in Juarez, Mexico. There would be no need for most other office jobs, HR, accounting, upper management, etc. I believe the only people they wanted to keep were our sales and consultants. When it came to IT, they have a standard policy to have no internal IT employees. All IT functions are hired out to third-party consultants. That hit me pretty hard. I went home dejected and not ready to find another job. I did determine to give the last two weeks the best I had to offer. Day 5, I'm called into one of the conference rooms with one of the big medical company reps. Hey BamBam67, how are you holding up? To be honest, I'm still in shock. We all worked so hard and I know getting bought was the goal, but how it all went down is a real disappointment. Are you mad or upset? You can be honest. I'm mostly sad. I worked really hard to make this place run like clockwork, and now I have a week left before I have to go find some other job. What if I asked you to stay on longer? Would you consider it? We need someone to take care of the salespeople and the servers you have on site. I'd have to think about it. Well, think about an extension of employment for another month. We'll meet again Monday. Well, what would you do? I'm at a point in my career that I'd never been paid higher. I know the servers inside and out, and my users are quickly going to be cut, but my pay wouldn't. I would be in charge of the salespeople who are all remote. So, I stayed. One month was extended to three, three to six, and six to one full year. It was bittersweet overall. I'd spend an entire week of every month getting the socks, Sarbanes-Oxley reports done, send out USP dongles to our salespeople, who would constantly lose or break them, and I would help our loan accounting person get things packed up and shipped out of the office. It was good work until it just became me and him only in the office during our last month. When I had to pack up my servers, I admit I shed a tear or two. We closed the doors to the office and I separated myself from big medical company. A month later, I get a call from the IT temp agency. They want me to help this other medical company because they just got bought by, yep, you know it, big medical company. The pay was good and they needed help swapping out their computers to the big medical company computers and I knew all the ins and outs. I took the job and met the three guys doing IT. They were all very nice and all positive about their future with big medical company. I couldn't tell them what awaited them day one. They didn't know me or trust me. After working with them for two weeks and working long days replacing desktop after desktop, I was accepted into their group. I knew I was accepted when I was invited to attend a meeting with them and the VP of IT from Big Medical Company. VP was someone I had heard of and saw his name, but we never met or spoke. We go to the meeting and VP basically tells us that the deployment of desktops needs to move faster and that an outside IT person was coming in to help. My new IT team looked at each other a bit confused, but if they needed to go faster, okay. And then, as the stars aligned, as we left the meeting, I take it upon myself to introduce myself to VP of IT. The quick conversation went like this. Excuse me, VP, I was the IT manager at, put my old company name here, 
we never got to meet each other and I just appreciate the extra time you gave me so we could shut the office down. Oh, you're the one. He sees my outstretched hand to shake, believe it or not, in the before time people actually shook hands as a sign of acknowledgement and respect, and just walks away. I could hear a mumbling, talking to other big medical company people, that guy cost us a lot of our IT budget. I stood shocked at how incredibly rude a person could be. My blood started to boil. My new IT members, again, I was just a temp, saw the entire interaction and were surprised. We all went back to our IT area and had a quick conversation. Bam Bam 67, what was that with the VP? Unfortunately, that is what you can expect from big medical company. What do you mean? Okay, I've only been here a couple weeks. You know I worked with big medical company before being bought out. Can I tell you what's really happening right now? What do you guys think is happening? I'm happy to do this job for big medical company. You mean taking out every Dell computer that you deployed and switching them with a special BMC IBM? Yeah, sure, it's for security and standardization. It's for them to take control of your network and your systems so they can remote into support. But someone has to support the users on site, right? Yes, someone does. Who do you think is coming in to help with deployment? I believe the VP said he was a certified IBM support specialist. So, are any of you IBM certified? No, that guy coming in is going to replace you all. I have no doubt about it. And after working with you guys, I couldn't stay silent any longer. Update your resume and start looking for a new job now. As soon as the computers are swapped out, they won't need you anymore. You are just overhead, a number on a report. You all saw how VP treated me after the meeting. I shouldn't have to say much more. We all found new jobs within a month by helping each other by reformatting our resumes, giving each other contact info, references, advice, and more. The IBM support guy did take over all desktop support for the company. He would come in while I still worked my contract. All tickets that weren't emergencies were pointed to him. I was not allowed to help just allowed to answer the phone. I would field calls asking when support was coming, and all I could do is tell them to wait. Sometimes, IBM support guy would come in late, 9 to 10 a.m., if he came in at all. He would take an hour lunch and then leave by 2 p.m. After I left, I kept in touch with people on the inside and was told he would take days to support the most simplest requests. When users are viewed as just users and not people, that's a big step towards bad IT support. When IT is viewed as just overhead, that plants the seed for creating bitter IT personnel, poor support, etc. Big medical company probably saves a ton of money by hiring third-party support, but they probably lose just as much in productivity from workers who have to wait or receive subpar support. Okay, I'm stepping down from my soapbox. I think I was there a total of 6-8 to eight weeks before I found a new job as an IT director. I was excited about being hired at a beer distributor. What could go wrong? Sounds like fun, right? For those of you who don't know, this story leads into our previous Tales from Tech Support video, The Boss Volunteers Our Company for Beta Testing. It's a longer video and it's linked at the top of the description down below. Thanks again to OP, you can check them out at the links in the description down below. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day, bye bye.